Mark has gained great insight into this debilitating disease. He has explored alternative techniques, including past life regression and suggestive therapy in an effort to alleviate his condition. And in the process, he has learned a vast amount of information about his own psyche. In addition to his private practice, Mark is under contract with the Professional Rehabilitation Service Agency in Newport News, Virginia. He also serves as a pain management volunteer with the Regional Hospital Hospice Center. He is presently working on a pilot program in conjunction with the Diabetes Research Institute and a regional hospital to investigate the impact of suppressed anger on diabetes management and insulin sensitivity. And I'm also a diabetic and really anxious to hear what this man has to say. How about a warm, wonderful welcome for my friend. Thank you. As Ramona indicated, I was diagnosed at the age of 17 months. Um, I've experienced all the wonderful highs and lows of having diabetes, uh, in, uh, insulin dependent diabetes. I've learned over the years that the condition I have, as told by conventional medicine, is incurable. I've also learned that conventional medicine says type 2 is incurable. I don't buy into that. More of the type 2 than the type 1. I'm still searching on various techniques for type 1. But I would like to speak for just a moment about the differences between the two for those of you who are a little uncertain of the definitions. Type 1 di diabetes, juvenile onset diabetes, is what I was diagnosed with at 17 months. Basically, I, I need to take insulin for the rest of my life on a daily basis. Type 2 is generally considered adult onset. Um, I'd just like to see a show of hands. Who has been diagnosed with juvenile onset, insulin dependent, juvenile onset? Okay, how about for type 2? Okay, I see several hands raise up. For type 2 diabetes, um, I'm going to give you the title of a book. It's a must-read book. The uh, title is Reversing Diabetes, appropriate title. The author is Dr. Julian Whitaker. I see a woman over there has probably read it already. There's some very good information in this book. And I know I'm not going to make very many friends with a concession stand outside, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of, of what I consider to be the evil foods and that foods that should be avoided, especially by individuals with type 2 diabetes. Namely, any foods that are composed of refined bleached flour, refined sugar. In fact, the American Diabetic Association came out earlier this year with a statement saying that consumption or high consumption of these foods increases the likelihood of acquiring diabetes. So one very effective way of reducing your chances, maybe even adding to, or adding to the probability of reversing it, cut those foods out of your diet. Go with the more complex, the whole grain. Find an organic health food stores, become a, a, a more conscientious buyer, shopper. Uh, other avenues you can pursue, stress reduction, weight reduction, uh, finding out if there may be any traumatic events that occurred before the diagnosis, basically doing some introspection, if you will. You folks are trained hypnosis, as am I. You can use your own training with you. We'll, we'll go into some of those techniques uh, this afternoon. Now, a few years back, I came to the realization that life wasn't sweet for the diabetic patient. When we take an objective look at it, we see that a diabetic patient has to live a very regimented lifestyle. Can't eat sugar. The doctor tells you right up front, cut sweets out of your diet. Um, yes? Oh, you can't hear me? Okay. Is this better? When we examine the regimen a diabetic patient must follow, it's generally avoid all sweets and sugars. No more candy, no more cake, no more pastries. Secondly, you have to